Hi there. In this QuickBooks Online video, we'll quickly look at accounts receivable. Um, we'll add a new customer and enter a receipt, an estimate, and then convert that estimate into an invoice. So I'm going to go to QuickBooks and again I'm choosing the test drive. And I'm going to go to sales, customers, and new customer. So this is all of the data we can add for the new customer. All that's required is the customer display name. I'm going to enter Sally Smith. Her first name is Sally. Last name Smith. Company name Sally Smith. And you can add a bit more information. Pretty much all of it is self-explanatory. Uh, we can have customers within customers within customers. I believe nine levels deep. Addresses, that's pretty straightforward. You can add some personal notes there. Uh, we'll look at multiple currencies in level two, but uh, you can add a payment method so you don't have to choose it at a time of um, receipt or payment. And terms to set due dates for invoices as well as receipts. Uh, we have categories. We haven't added any, added any yet. And if you have a tax code number and an opening balance, which we'll look at in level two. So I'm just going to choose save, and that's basically adding a customer. Um, I'm going to quickly create a sales receipt. So if you choose new transaction here, receipt, that'll create a receipt for Sally Smith. You can always choose a different customer at that time, or you can choose all sales new transaction sales receipt. So sales receipts are for COD transactions. That is the customer is paying at the same time as the purchase. So I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to create a new one on the fly. So this guy is Joe Novak. I'm not going to add any details. I'm just going to quickly choose save. And again, he's paying at the time of purchase. I'm going to say with a check. And we have a check number for him. Check number 104. And we're depositing it to our checking account. You might have uh, a um, undeposited funds as well that you eventually transfer into your checking account. And notice on the receivable side, there is no um, expense categories. So we can't sell uh, anything but items to our customers, unlike on the payable side. And uh, so Joe no Novak is going for some employee training, which costs fifteen hundred dollars plus HST. Again, we're in this company's in Ontario, and that's pretty much it. I'll choose save and close, and next I'll create an estimate. So I'll choose new transactions, create an estimate. An estimate you can consider similar to an order or a quote, and. I'll use Kathy's Consulting. She already exists in this list. And you want to add an expiration date. Depending on your service, you may 
have this expire in six months, depending on the your industry. I'll just give her a couple of months to accept this estimate. Don't want to place too many limitations on your customers, otherwise they'll wander away. And she's asking about uh, the platinum party. So we let her know, basically, by uh, an estimate that it's going to cost her thirty-three ninety, including tax. And you can send this to her email. She doesn't actually exist, so I'm not going to send it. So I'll just choose save and close. To convert that estimate to an invoice is, of course, very straightforward. So I'm just going to shrink the sidebar here so we can see this a bit better. So there's our Kathy's estimate. So if you click right on create invoice, it'll copy this estimate to an invoice. I say copy because the estimate will still remain. And she's accepted it. I'll just choose save and close. Now, now that that has been um, copied to this invoice, you see the, invo the estimate is still here, so it's been copied, not converted. Um, we can now receive payment. So a little later, she's accepted the invoice. She's anxious to get going with this event, so she's gone ahead and paid us right away. So I can choose receive payment. There's the line item. It gets checked because we selected it from the previous list. And I'll choose save and new. So if you uh, realize that you made a mistake on an invo invoice, of course, it's very easy to fix. My favorite way to find the invoice um, basically, we need to find it, then change it, then save it. So my favorite way to find is by using the magnifying glass. So we're looking for um, an invoice from Adwin Co. So if I click on my magnifying glass, choose Advanced Search. I'm going to choose under the All Transactions drop-down. Invoices. Uh, by the way, invoices are always on the receivable side. Bills are purchase invoices on the payable side. So invoices, when they say invoices, they mean sales invoices. Um, customers, container equals, and again, we're looking for someone named Adwin, Adwin Co. So I'm going to choose him, search, and there's the one invoice that's outstanding. So I'm going to just click on any of the gray area here. That'll open up the invoice, and it turns out he only bought 495 badges. I should just save that, uh, change it, and save it. So it's as simple as that to change an invoice. Now let's quickly look at one more example in the form of a recurring invoice. So we have a customer that um, requires us to uh, train his employees every week. Just bring my sidebar back here. I'll choose sales, all sales, and I'll create an invoice. And that is for Chattas. And this uh, actual service that we're going to have will start today. So I'm going to handle this slightly differently than I did with previous recurring invoices. So we, he actually has asked us to um, perform this training today and then every week after this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this invoice after I enter it and then create the template. So um, the future versions of this invoice will come from a template. So I'm going to choose the employee training, one of those, and 
and let's go to HST. So I'm just going to choose save. That leaves the invoice available in front of me. And then I just choose make recurring. And scheduled, customer, weekly, every Monday. And it starts next Monday. Which is the 6th. And hopefully it never ends. We could always do it $1,500 a week. And I'll save template. So we already saved the original transaction with the save. That also saves a template. So then when next Monday rolls around, it'll come up on a schedule or we can enter it manually by choosing recurring transactions. And there it is there. We could just choose use. Again, imagine that it's next Monday the 6th. We would just enter that. I'm just going to cancel it. I don't want to enter it quite yet. It's not next Monday yet. I'll say yes. Oh, I know I said it before, but just one last example, um, and that's customer credits. So again, sales, all sales, new transaction, and credit memo. So if somebody returns an item for a credit or a refund, this is how we handle that. So Anil Kumar, they bought a bunch of water bottles and they are returning some. So I'm just going to enter those water bottles. They're returning five water bottles. So you can enter a description here. Five water bottles were leaky. Credit customer. And save and close. So if I go to receive a payment from Anil Kumar, so if we just uh, filter this to find only invoices that are open. Here's an invoice here. So if I just slide this over again. So if I receive payment from Anil Kumar, you see that the original amount was 4407. The open balance is 4350. So that credit was applied. And I'll just save and close. So that's pretty much um, adding customers, uh, receipts, invoices, credit memos, estimates, as well as payments. Thanks so much for watching.